Hey guys, Miss Hannah here. I am ready for our bedtime stories. I hope you are too. Today I've brought a friend. Do you know who this guy is? This little guy ooh, is Corduroy. He was one of my favorite characters when I was little. And today we're going to actually read the book Corduroy. And that's what I'm going to start out with. So, let's put Corduroy to the side so he can listen to our story. And then let's get started with our books. First one, Corduroy. Voila. All right, Don Freeman. Corduroy. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see. Okay, Corduroy. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. I'll try to put that one there so you can see it. Okay, ready? Now, the store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things. But no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Now, Corduroy watched. He watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor. And there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until, pop, off came the button, and off the mattress, corduroy toppled, blum, 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 blum. And bang, right into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Crash! Now, Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now, who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. Do you see our friend hiding? 
He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? So, the watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Now, Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning and there looking at him with a wide warm smile was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Let's see. Um, last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed, stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The end. Now, my next book is an old favorite of mine as well. This book is one that's very easy, but it's very fun. It's Brown Bear, Brown Bear. What Do You See? by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carle. So let's read this book, y'all. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. This bear is brown. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Well, blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? Ooh, I see a green frog looking at me. Ooh. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. Purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. White dog. My dog, what do you see? <laughs> I see a black sheep looking at me. Woof! Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? Oh, I see a goldfish looking at me. Bah! Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? Oh, I see a teacher looking at me. He said he saw a teacher looking at him. Well, teacher, teacher, what do you see? 
I see children looking at me. And children, hey children, what do you see? We see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish, and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. The end. So, for my next story, A Brave Bear. This book is by Sean Taylor and Emily Hughes. Start out here. Everything was hot. We're getting there soon. A brave bear. All right, so there's the first picture, guys. All right, you see? It says, the sun was hot. The air was hot. Even the shade was hot. And my dad said, I think a pair of hot bears is probably the hottest thing in the world. But I thought up a good idea. I said, if we go to the river, we can splash in and cool down. Dad said, all right, let's go then. It's quite a long way to go to the river. See all that way they got to go to the river? That's a long way. Well, there's the grassy part to get across, then the bushy part to push through, and after that, you've got to jump from rock to rock. Boing, ba boing, ba boing. Boing. And I said, I think a jumping bear is probably the jumpiest thing in the world. Dad told me, be careful, just do small jumps. Small jumps. And look at his little grumpy face. Grr. But I wanted him to see me do a big jump. So I got myself ready. I got myself set. And I slipped right over. Plunk. Dad helped me up, but I was sad. My knee was hurting. Everything was too hot. I didn't want to go to the river anymore. Dad said we could wait for a bit. Then we both looked down at the water. Then he said if I wanted to go on, he could carry me. I like it when he carries me but I decided to go on my own. And Dad said, I think a brave bear is probably the bravest thing in the world. Down at the river, Dad splashed in. I did too. Look at them having fun. We played around and cooled down. And I said, I think a pair of wet bears is probably the wettest thing in the world. And on the way home, the sun was glowing, the air was glowing. Even tomorrow was glowing. The end. I love that book. You know, I like a lot of books. Now, this next book, it's kind of fitting considering we're reading bedtime stories today. I like to kind of bright, so it kind of ruins the bedtime mood, but hopefully this book will help us. This book is a bedtime for Bear by Bonnie Becker, and it's illustrated by Katie McDonald Denton. Can you see a bedtime for Bear? All right, here we go. 
time for beer. Now, everything had to be just so for Bear's bedtime. His glass of water had to sit on the exact right spot on his bedstand. His favorite pillow must be nicely fluffed. His nightcap needed to be snug. Most of all, it had to be quiet. Very, very quiet. One evening, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. Now, when he opened the door, there stood Mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed, and he clasped a tiny suitcase in his paws. Let me bring it up so you can see the little tiny suitcase. See? Yeah. Well, I am here to spend the night exclaimed Mouse with a happy wiggle of his whiskers. Uh, surely we agreed on next Tuesday, protested Bear. No, said Mouse, you most definitely said tonight. Oh, said Bear. Bear had never had an overnight guest before Guests could quite possibly mess things up and make noise, and Bear needed quiet, absolute quiet at bedtime. Even so, Bear and Mouse enjoyed an evening of checkers and warm cocoa, and soon it was time for bed. Remember, I must have absolute quiet, reminded Bear. Oh, indeed, said Mouse. Now, Bear, he set out his glass of water adjusted his nightcap, he fluffed his favorite pillow, I'm trying to get this even, there we go, he fluffed his favorite pillow and climbed into bed. It was very, very quiet. He closed his eyes. Ah. Well, bristle, bristle, bristle. Bear heard a noise. It was Mouse brushing his teeth. Ahem! Bear cleared his throat in a reminding sort of way. Oh, most sorry, said Mouse. Here's Mouse brushing his teeth. Because, you know, that's really important to do, and I didn't hear that as Bear's routine. Hmm, hmm, Mouse hummed while he put on his nightshirt. Absolute quiet, muttered Bear most patiently. Deepest apologies, said Mouse. Creak, creak, squeak, rattle, rattle, went Mouse's bed as he hopped in. Bear jammed his pillows over his ears, gritted his teeth, and closed his eyes. He was just about to drift off the wind. Good night, Bear, Mouse called softly. Bear tried to pretend he was asleep. Good night, Mouse called a little louder. My ears are highly sensitive, cried Bear. Really? How interesting, Mouse said. Can you hear this? Mouse mumbled into the pillow. Yes. Amazing. How about this? Mouse said from under his pillow. Quiet. Mouse slipped under his blankets, crawled to the bottom of his bed, and whispered, Can you hear? Silence, Bear roared. Mouse slid from his bed and in, went into the closet and said in the tiniest possible voice in the farthest, darkest, teeniest possible corner of the closet, Surely you can't. <laughs> Will this torment never cease? Wailed Bear. 
Sorry, Bear. Good night, Bear, whispered Mouse, tiptoeing back into bed as quiet as a, well, you know, a mouse. Bear fluffed his favorite pillow, adjusted his nightcap, and waited. But there was no more sound from Mouse. At last it was quiet. Very, very quiet. Bear heard a shuffling sound. Mouse, is that you? No answer. Bear heard a creak, creak, creak on the floorboards. I know it's you. No answer. You can't fool me, Bear growled, but he didn't sound very certain. Bear heard a low moaning noise. Mm. Mouse! Silence. Bear was sure something rustled on the floor. Mouse! He cried, wake up! Mouse stumbled out of bed, small and gray and sleepy-eyed. But Bear couldn't see any rustly, moany sort of thing in his room. His room looked quite like it had always looked. Um, what is it? asked Mouse. Nothing, lied Bear, still clutching his blanket to his chin. I, I must have been talking in my sleep. Bear chuckled, but it was rather quavery. Ah, <sighs> said Mouse with a glance at Bear. Well, could I peek under your bed, said Mouse. I like to check for things, you know. Well, if you must, said Bear. Nothing, said Mouse from under the bed. Uh, you'll want to check behind the curtains, I suppose, Bear said. All clear, declared Mouse a moment later. You'd uh, better check uh, the closet, offered Bear. Then you won't be the least bit nervous. Mouse came out of the closet, dusting his paws. Not a thing. Thank you, Bear. Good night. Wait, said Bear. Y you'll want a bedtime story, I expect, said Bear, for your nerves. For my nerves, said Mouse. Oh, indeed, I'm, I'm quite shaken. Then, with an eager flick of his tail, I'm sorry, book is shaky. With an eager flick of his tail, he settled down on Bear's favorite pillow, and Bear told him all about the adventures of the brave, strong Bear and the very frightened little mouse. Mm-hmm, long stories. Soon, Bear began to yawn. Mouse yawned, too. Good night, Bear, said Mouse. Good night, Bear, Bear mumbled. Then Bear began to snore loudly. But Mouse just smiled. And soon, Mouse and Bear were fast asleep. Shh. The so that's the end of our books for today, and I really hope you guys have a good night. Don't forget to brush your teeth and put on your jammas after your bath, and I will see you again very soon. I'll see you on Sunday, and we'll read some more really good books, and I can't wait. So I'll see you then, okay? See you soon. Bye!